Science of war leads one to dictatorship, pure and simple. Science of nonviolence can alone lead one to pure democracy. Gandhi, October 15, 1938. I would say that on the political level, this is the most important application of the principle that uh, means and ends are interconvertible, that you cannot use violent means, of which war is probably the most violent, to bring about a nonviolent end, which is a fully representative democratic society. So uh, here in the United States, we are experiencing the uh, inability uh, or the uh, paradoxicality of the attempt to have a secure country on the basis of an enormous military. Uh, and not to mention the incredible expenditure that it takes to sustain that military machinery, whether we're using it or not. I think this is something that the peace movement has recognized and has spoken to but it's important because, well, it's important for many reasons, but one of them is this is a level on which we can reach ordinary people, many of whom are endorsing violence for the use of establishing democracy. And I've mentioned war, but the same thing is true really on the level of criminal justice. We think that being violent or criminals will bring us a secure a domestic society, and we think that maintaining a terrific military will bring us security in the international regime. Neither of those work, and we seem to be stuck in a version of what Freud would call the repetition compulsion, because we don't see the second half of Gandhi's truism, that if you want democracy, you have to have nonviolence.